Hey guys, it's Katie at scrappingkatie.ctmh.com and today I am joining some girls here on YouTube to bring you a series called Stretch the Sketch. So today I am playing along with a couple of girls and this series is called Stretch the Sketch. And so we choose a sketch. Well, this series we're choosing a sketch. Usually the sketch is provided and then we stretch it to a 12 by 12. So this actually is a card sketch from Page Maps. I'll leave a link down below. I love pulling sketches from Page Maps. Um, they really have a sketch for almost any type of scrapbook that you do, whether that be eight and a half by 11, traveler's notebooks, um, 12 by 12, and then they also have cards. So I have chosen this card one. And as you can see, I kind of blew it up because that's how I'm going to picture it on my 12 by 12. I've also pulled a couple of photos of my daughter and our little dog. And this is after he got groomed. And he doesn't ride in the car a lot. And so I just thought it was cute that he just, he immediately knew what to do um, looking out the window. And then, of course, she loved him looking out the window. And we got a couple of passerbys just staring at him because he's just such a cutie. And then I've also pulled out a couple of paper packets. This one is pretty old. It is, I believe, still available. I'll leave links down below to everything I used. But you can see here where it's really pet themed. Um, we've got cats and dogs, and these are the stickers. And then it's also got some pretty cute pattern paper. And so I'm going to be pulling from that. And then I'm also going to be using some of the titles on the sticker sheet from the Stars and Sparklers, and then some of the pattern papers for this as well. So I love pulling from different lines and just kind of making it my own. So let me kind of pull some scraps out of here and then we can get started creating. Okay, so I found this scrap. So it's got the dog bones on it. So I'm definitely going to use that as either the top or the bottom. And then I love this pattern paper. So it's got the dog side and the cat side. So I'm going to use the dog side, of course. And let's see. So that is six. So I think I'll put that up top. And I'm going to cut this to five inches. And then the only other cutting, I think, these were in all the scraps and they're four inch squares of candy apple cardstock. Now I'm using some photos. I do the persnickety box. Um, and so they come with four by four photos. And I choose to get the white border on them because I love white borders but because I want to use these scraps I'm just going to cut down the white border a little bit and then that way you can see that candy apple cardstock behind there yes perfect and so for this card sketch you can see those large bees on there I think those are where my photos are going to go. So instead of the bees, we're going to have photos. And then instead of the sentiment where you would usually put on a card, I'm going to have my title. And then in the other little blank pieces, I'm going to have either other embellishments or my journaling. And so I can pretty much fit everything that a traditional layout would have using this card sketch and just stretching it to, to the 12 by 12 format. So off camera, I've gone ahead and I've matted these photos. I'm going to build everything on a white daisy piece of card stock. Put that to the side. Now to break up this puppy pattern paper, I have 
cut a couple of zip strips, which is like the equivalent of branding strips. And I love these hearts. So that's going to kind of break up the white from the white. And I need to cut this down a little bit more. I'm going to do that one. Let's try four and a half. Yeah, so that still gives me the white space that my other one did. And actually, I'm going to put this on top just to give a little more white space. And then this one, because I don't have a full one, because one photo is going to go right there, I'm just going to kind of play with it because I can put this photo anywhere I want. And I can even do some little groupings of some embellishments to hide that opening. So I want to make sure that I'm applying tape to the cat side. That would suck. So a pet is really new to us, an inside pet. We have had outside dogs before, big huge dogs. Um, when the boys were little, and then, but our daughter, she's the baby of the family, and she has never had a pet. So, we decided to get one a couple of years ago. And you can see the bone, like one side is dog bones and the other side of this is the fish bones. I just love this little paper, even though we don't have cats. If you had cats, you could do it. Anyways, and so not only did we get her a pet, but we did inside pet, which we've never done before. But uh, he is a poodle, and so you know poodles don't have a lot of the allergens that other dogs have. Um, they don't shed. So it's actually been really pleasant. We have really enjoyed having little Hamilton. And he's sweet. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't jump up on us. The boys have kind of snuck him some human food. And so we are having trouble with him begging. But he really only does it to them. So I'm like, you made your bed lie in it. You know, you shouldn't have done that. Um... So, and you know, to my knowledge, he doesn't jump on the furniture, but if you've ever seen the movie Pets, you know, as soon as their owners leave, they have wild parties. And that's just what I envision happening as soon as we leave. I envision him just having the run of the house and him doing whatever he wants. But like with any child, I'm going to scoot this over a little bit so my hearts line up. You know, like with any child, I'm sure we all know. You know, when the parents are away, the children will play. And then, of course, because he's a poodle and we keep him curly, he has to be brushed quite frequently. And then he also has to go to the groomer quite frequently. Okay, so we have these two. I think I'm going to place this one up top. So even though they're facing kind of that way, I think that this one more or less stops. You know, when you're scrapbooking, you want your subjects to go inside. You don't want anything peering to the outside. And so I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to actually do straight. I think I'm going to scoot over and I'm just going to have something right there. So I want two hearts showing on this side. I want two hearts showing on that side let's see i want the bottom of the photos almost touching there okay so we're good there and then let's pull out the sticker sheet so you can see i've already got some clouds that i put on wax paper from the last time i used this that's just my method. Um, you can go ahead and take the sticky off your stickers, whatever you want to do. I know some people put it on blocks. 
I just find that if I put them on the wax paper, then I can play with the placement before committing. So I decided to add some color to make these little doggies. This one in particular, because I'm going to use this uh, sticker to add some color to make it match our dog. And so I am using one of our TriBlend markers. It's the gold brown shades. I am not a color at all but these make it so easy. I can watch people color with Copics all day long because I just love how talented those people are. Um, I just, I can't do it. So these markers make it really easy because you just need one marker and basically it does the rest. So I'm no expert again, but I usually start with my dark color and just go over the lines where a shadow would be. And then I will fill in with the medium marker. And so you can see I'm kind of including all the shadows on the left. And then, you know, there would be a shadow underneath his little scarf. And then the middle shade, I go over the dark shade and then just kind of come out a little bit further. And then by going over that dark shade, it's kind of blending these two colors together. And then it'll do the same with the light one here in a second. And then you can always go in with the light one and then just kind of lighten up even the darkest shade. But I just find these markers just make it really easy for me to appear like I'm a colorer. And then also, um, coloring is pretty hard for me right now because I have, I'm right-handed and I have a shoulder issue. Pretty sure it's a rotator cuff. I finally get to see a doctor this next week so hopefully I'll find some relief, but it's just, it's really hard to do little finite things. And you can see this lighter color. I am just going over the dark and the medium and then coloring everything else. And again, I mean, I, you can really do what you want to do. I'm sure if you are a master color, you're probably gasping at what I'm doing right now but this works and it, you know it adds a little bit of shading to these cute little puppies just a little bit of color again if you wanted to you could color all the puppies I just wanted this guy to stand out because this is the one I'm going to use the large sticker for okay so I pretty much like him and then I took some other stickers so living our best lives right uh, live like someone left the gate open. My pets complete my family and treat yourself. And then I still have this sticker sheet. And I think I want to do sweet. But I'm not really sure. So I'm going to put that to the side so I can try to figure it out. I am going to add some 3D foam to the back of these. So I've already got that one glued down and then I'm going to glue this one down. And I've decided to only do one heart showing. Hopefully my little cluster of embellishments will hide that. Okay, so we've got the dog, we've got this title, we've got these, and then we've got this cute little bone, and then we still have the clouds, which I like the addition of the clouds because they're looking out the window. So, I think I might do that to kind of get that red border. Let's 
steel. Although, I might do that. That. And I think I want to separate these. I don't know. I think maybe that. And, you know, it says my pets. This is only one pet. So, I might actually... Use this pennant up above that top photo, and that way I've got yellow and yellow. Okay, I think I'm good. Okay, so let's take this off, and I'm going to put just a little bit of adhesive on the very end because that one's going to hang over. So again, 3D foam adhesive. And I think I want that one on the photo and I think I want this one right here. Hmm, probably not going to be able to take this up. Oh, I guess I am. So, hopefully, you should always go with your first instinct. So my first instinct was to put both of these on the photo. And then I changed my mind. So that, and then again... I need some 3D foam tape because these are stickers. If I didn't use 3D foam tape, it would stick to the bottom. And I want this one a little further out. And that also allows me to hide where I ripped that off. Okay, and then I'm going to want 3D foam tape on this. So I was going to take the sticky off but I don't think I have to I think because it'll stick to the dog and it'll stick to this other photo I can just put 3d foam tape in the middle and the sweet little doggy is just going to go stuck directly to the layout and we're almost done I want to make his tongue just a little bit darker so I've got this pink marker. I'm going to do that. I did the same to these dogs too. Treat yourself. And then again, I love these clouds. I'm going to actually add some more adhesive. These clouds have been on that wax paper for quite a while. So I'm just going to add more adhesive just to make sure they stick. And then I'm going to add 3D foam adhesive to this one. Just to kind of add some dimension on this side of the layout. If you can't tell, I uh, love 3D foam tape. I buy this big huge roll off of Amazon and I mean it lasts a while but it's not as much as you think so I think I'm gonna go up over okay and then this is the only other thing and I think I just want to cut it right there and adhere it to 
down. I can't tell if it's straight or not. Okay. So there it is. Again, I took this card sketch from Page Maps and I just stretched it to a 12 by 12 one page layout. You definitely could make an accompanying page if you wanted using the same borders just all the way across to make them kind of mesh together. But being that I only have these two photos, I think it's perfect. And then I'll just add a little bit of journaling right here or maybe even some strip journaling right here. And I am overall really happy. I'm so glad that this is from my stash and these cute little puppies I got to color in. Oh, you know what? I think I want to make, yeah. For some reason, this puppy didn't have his little bandana colored. So I'm going to color it in. And then that's really it. Um, again, I'll leave links down below. There's a whole lot of girls playing along. And they're stretching different sketches because we get to choose which sketch we want to stretch. So I'll leave links down below to their YouTube videos. And then I'll also leave links down to any of the products that are used that might still be available. Thanks so much for stopping by and watching. If you liked what you saw, leave me a thumbs up and a comment. And as always, if you aren't already a subscriber, I would love for you to go ahead and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll be alerted the next time I post a crafty video.